doing my lot for the first time in many years to try to go back into life's past. And I pray that you'll give me strength and, and, and what I need, Lord, to be in this hour. And may all my mistakes in life only be a stepping stone to others that would bring them closer to thee. Grant it, Lord, may sinners see the footprints on the sands of time, and may they be led to thee. These things we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm told by my mother, my father, and my dad was a lover in the woods. My mother and father were married when my mother was 14 years old, and my dad was 18 years old. I was born when Mama was 15 years old. Just a child having a child. That was all. I was born and only weighed five pounds. Little bitty fellow. I lived in a little old love cabin. The picture hangs in my house today that a person painted for me in California. I was a little old love cabin, and in there, in this little old cabin that morning on April the 6th, when the midwife opened up the window so that I could shine in to show, let Mama see what I look like, and Papa, when they looked in, the, in there, there was a light come whirling through the window about the size of a pillow, and circled around where I was and went down on the bed. Several of the mountain people were standing there, they were crying. My people back before me were Catholic, I'm Irish on both sides. And so they were, they, my people, not my mother and father, because they'd gotten away from the church. And then they didn't know what happened. Of course, you know how superstitious the mountain people is, that that woman that was born over yonder on the hill, <laughs> there was a light appeared over yonder in the room, wonder what kind of a young it'll be, see? He'll be born somewhere, he'll be certain, certain things that our mountain people are. All right. Now, that was all I knew until I was about, all I knew of in the supernatural line until I was about three years old. Amos 3.7 says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing without first revealing his secret through his servants, the prophets. Joel, Malachi, Jesus, Matthew, Luke, Peter and John all foresaw that a prophet would come to the Gentiles before the close of our dispensation. His ministry was to restore the apostolic faith, finish the mystery of God, and call his people out from denominational religion into agreement with the fullness of the word, for the manifestation of the sons of God and the translation. Jesus said that all of the prophets from Abel to John had been rejected, and foretold that the prophets he would send would likewise not be received. God hides in humility, and he reveals himself in simplicity. His servants, likewise, are not to be recognized by fine clothing, scholarship, or eloquent speech. God told Brother Branham to leave Jeffersonville and to do the work of an evangelist, but in deference to the wishes of his mother-in-law, he put it off. God took the lives of his first wife, Sister Hope, pictured here with Brother Branham, and their baby daughter through the 1937 flood which he had prophesied. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Brother Branham married again. Here he is pictured with his wife Meda. Brother Branham's ministry spearheaded the healing revival which followed World War II. God told him he would travel around the world praying for kings and potentates. But with only a seventh grade education he could not understand how. God said, as the prophet Moses was given two signs for a vindication, so will you. Take the people's right hand and your left, and stay humble. A reaction on your right hand will indicate what's wrong with the patient. And it will come to pass that you'll know the very secret of their hearts. It's the return of Christ's spirit. This first picture accompanied the prayer request of Florence Nightingale, a missionary nurse in Africa. The second photograph accompanied her testimony of healing while this Indian boy was instantly healed of a paralyzed and short leg. Here we see the non-European section at the Sunday afternoon service at South Africa's Durban racetrack, the second largest in the world. And this shows a section of the congregation attending the native service at Bloemfontein. There were a great many tent meetings following the Second World War. 
This photograph shows some of the audience that attended a Branham healing campaign in Kansas City. While this shot was taken at a tent campaign in San Bernardino, California in November 1950. And on the road down I had a vision of a little boy, uh, watch the Bible, you know, a little boy that would be about eight years old and the little boy would uh, have a boy, a little bob-like hair and dressed very poorly and his little, would have an accident and his little foot would be run through his sock. He had on a very odd dressed child. I said, you'd be killed in an accident and you'll be lame by the side of the road dead when I find him. But the Lord God is going to give him his life back again. And I made that statement at the platform before about 7,000 people that night. And the young Finland that day, that little boy laying there, and I walked around him laying there dead, been dead for a half hour. You read in the books. I started to walk away, shut up their hands up, turn around. Look around the back. It's evergreen rocks left in there. The car will be laying across the road wreck. He'll have on little stockings like up high, a crock haircut. His little eyes will be turned back. The bones in his body will be broken. Look at those. Oh, God! I said, Fancy, oh, yeah. The mayor of the city there. I said, if that boy isn't on his feet in two minutes from now, I'm a false prophet riding run me out of Finland. And this little girl was in the last stage of leukemia. Just, uh, just so bad that they could not feed her by this mouth anymore. She had to be, her blood transfused through the veins. And she was a pretty little thing. Or she was small for her age, about like this little lady here, I suppose. But she was uh, about this high, very, they were like most of us. You could tell by the dressed child that, and the parents that they were very poor, just very poor. And um, so, but real reverend. And the Holy Spirit pronounced that child healed. I just think of that with leukemia. That little fella, and the blood was so bad they couldn't even feed it through the mouth no more. It had to take, go to the hospital and take the blood uh, for transfusions through the veins, feed it. I guess glucose or whatever, I don't know what medical terms does for that disease, but however it had to be fed that way. And before the child left the place, cried for a hamburger. Two or three days at that in school and was went to the doctor and the doctor was so amazed. He said, there's not even one trace of leukemia found in the child. Uh, that's instantaneously uh, on the mark, the power of Almighty God to take a bloodstream and cleanse it out. If God can take leukemia from a little girl who can't have faith for herself and make her whole, what can he do for you? God is true to his word. Our brother prayed for King George VI, who was healed of multiple sclerosis. A U.S. presidential candidate, Congressman George Upshaw, who was confined for 66 years, pushed his wheelchair from the meeting. Even his critics don't deny what God did in this ministry, revealing Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever, by the messianic sign of Hebrews 4.12, discerning the thoughts and intents of the heart, as it was in the days of Lot. The dead were raised to life, demons were cast out, cripples made whole, the blind saw, and even cancer was healed. Sometimes these meetings held crowds estimated at 500,000. A few weeks ago when I was in a city, and when we were preaching, you know, you're not supposed to take pictures, you know, while they were preaching. And when, same thing most of that was talked, but someone had a camera. And I said to a lady sitting out there, a stranger, I was in, in Southern Pine. I said, there is a shatter over this Miss So-and-so, a lady that I've never seen in my life. You just come from the doctor in two cancers, one on each breast, and you're given up. You are shattered with a black hood to death. And something said to a sister sitting by who had a flash camera, said, take the picture. And she didn't want to do it. Yet, take the picture. And she still refrained. And then again it come and she grabbed the picture and shot the picture and there it is. Scientifically, it's on the bulletin board. Black hooded shadow. 
Then, when the woman believed and prayer was made, a picture shot right straight back behind it, clear. I said, the shadow has gone. The lady lives by the grace of God. Following a revival meeting in 1933, when Brother Branham was baptizing the 17th of 500 in the Ohio River, the pillar of fire appeared above him in the form of a star as 5,000 people watched from the bank. A voice said, As John the Baptist foran my first coming, so your message will forerun my second coming. Once again, the unchanging God with unchanging ways sent us a prophet led by the angel of the Lord. When Moses led the first exodus of the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage, as prophesied by Abraham, he was preceded by the angel of the Lord in the form of a pillar of fire and cloud, or Shekinah. In the second exodus, Paul led the church out of Israel. God met him in the same pillar of fire on the Damascus road, and a voice said, Why do you persecute me? I am Jesus, and it's hard to kick against the pricks. Today we're living in the third and final exodus, wherein Christ is calling his bride out from the apostate churches into oneness with the word, for the manifestation of the sons of God and the translation. The unchanging God has once again been seen in the pillar of fire or Shekinah, and we have his photo. This picture was taken at Grant's Tabernacle and shows the pillar of fire on Brother Branham's shoulder. The pillar of fire photographed over Brother Branham's head at Houston, Texas in January 1950 had accompanied him since his birth. This famous photograph was examined by George J. Lacey, one of the FBI's investigators of questioned documents. And here is his certificate of authentication. Brother Branham said, The pillar of fire is an amber or emerald green colour, as described in the Bible. As Jesus told Peter and Andrew, Henceforth you will be fishers of men, he spoke to Brother Branham in a vision, wherein he was fishing for rainbow trout in a crystal clear lake, a type of the fullness of the word where God's elect feed their souls. Employing a metaphor of fly fishing, God said, like all great ministries, yours will consist of three pools. In your first pool, you'll hold the hand of a penitent seeking healing, and a supernatural sign will appear in your hand, by which I shall reveal the nature of their disease, to give them faith for their healing. They could be confident that the God who knew their condition could also heal them. This confirmed the twofold atonement, wherein Jesus was wounded for our transgressions, and by his stripes we are healed. This first pull attracted the attention of the little fish. Immense crowds of people recognized that God is alive. But his mission was not to catch the little fish, so he pulled his line just beyond their reach, and their swarming after the lure of divine healing attracted the attention of the bigger fish. For his second pull, God gave him the lure of the messianic sign of Hebrews 4.12. This identified God in Christ and was the last sign Jesus promised we Gentiles in Luke 17, 28-30, before the close of our dispensation, wherein he discerned the thoughts and intents of the people's hearts, revealing Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever, as God revealed himself to Abraham and Sarah from behind the flesh of a created man, immediately before the destruction of Sodom. But his mission was not to catch these bigger fish either, God used this sign not to attract the attention of the religious mass, but to awaken and gather the rainbow trout, or wise virgin. Ministers asked him to explain the first and second pools, and before long there were carnal impersonations across the land. Now, God said, set your line for the third pool, and don't try to explain it to anybody. The lure for the third pool is the revelation of the seven seals, the opening of the word will separate Jesus' true bride into the unity of the faith and call her from the world for the manifestation of the sons of God and the translation. There can be no impersonation of this, for the elect of God cannot be deceived on the revealed word of God. The last sign Jesus promised before the end of the Gentile dispensation was God, veiled behind the flesh of a sinner saved by grace, revealing Jesus Christ in the office of Son of Man, as God revealed himself to Abraham, veiled behind the flesh of a created man, before fire from heaven devoured Sodom and the Gentile cities on the plain. God is no respecter of persons. As he revealed himself to Israel, veiled behind the flesh of the virgin-born man, 
He has revealed himself by the same sign to we Gentiles today, with warning and a way of escape, before fire from heaven destroys all life on earth, as it was in the days of Lot. People suppose that if God sent a prophet today, he'd represent one of the denominations, but they fail to recognize that as the Hebrew denominations ended in apostasy, so do the Gentile denominations end in apostasy, and know it now, not. Now, to you who believe, the angel of God who has been sent to me to help you to believe Jesus Christ is not two foot from where I'm standing right now. If you believe me to be his servant, you'll take my word. I can't make you believe it. You only have to believe it. He's here now at the platform. Now the Lord bless you while I talk to the woman. Everyone be in prayer. These are sick people. Now, if this lady says that she is a stranger to me, I've never seen her in my life, no way at all of knowing her any way at all. Now, I could not heal her no more than I could save her. And you know I couldn't do that. But Jesus Christ has already did all of that when he died at Calvary, but he sent gifts into his church. Is that right? If it is, say amen. amen. And the gifts are to what? Edify the church. Is that right? In other words, to see believers unbelievers come in and say truly the Bible said if you all speak with tongues and there come in the unbelievers well they'll say you're mad but if there be one prophesy and reveal the secrets of the heart then won't that unbeliever fall down and say truly God is with you is that right That's exactly right all right you believe now with all your heart that Jesus Christ the Son of God is here now to perform and to do the things that he promised he would do lady I just want to talk to you as and the, the reason I'm doing this is to contact your spirit will you believe with all your heart and if God will just reveal to me what is wrong with you will you accept him as your healer you would now we are strangers I suppose are we never seen each other in life nowhere but God knows what's wrong with you isn't that right you're one of your greatest things. You're anemic also. Isn't that right? You believe that God will make you well? Lord Jesus, I pray that you will heal the woman. Make her well, Father. May she go from here tonight and be made completely whole. In Jesus Christ's name, I ask it. Amen. Now, go re re rejoicing. Pray. Now, that's according to your faith, sister. See, he never told me one thing, just said what was wrong with you. Watch what he said, see. What he tells you, that you do. Now, that's totally up to you, see. You believe it. You said you'd accept it. Now, he took it your word. You take him at his word. Go testify the same. You'll get wet. Amen. Let's say, thanks be to God. Amen. I trust that God is blessing you all out there now to where you can't disbelieve any longer. It would be a... A, a sin for you to disbelieve now. After God has sent his son and has performed this thing that he speaks of now and has done all these th signs and you has sent his Bible, sent his preachers, sent his gifts and you still disbelieve him, there's nothing left for you but to be condemned at the end. Is that right? But the only thing this is to do is to glorify God and to reveal Jesus Christ. That when he was here on earth, he did this very same thing. All Bible readers believe that, say amen. amen. And he said, when I go away, now come again a little while and the world will see me no more. That's the unbelievers. But ye shall see me, who? The believers. For I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Is that true? Then it's sin to disbelieve. Go ye and sin no more, or disbelieve no more, or a worse thing than this will come upon you, said Jesus. Is that true? Then we must believe. It's got to be a belief. Or perish. If I was God, if they could take my word for it, that would settle it. But people still don't take the word. Then signs and wonders are added into the church as Jesus Christ promised to do. And to my honest belief, I believe he's finishing up right now with the Gentiles and we'll turn to the Jews right away. And the Gentiles will be left in their 
dogmas and the things that they've got in their creeds and cold formal denominations and the church will be raptured and tucked up and the gospel will go to the Jews. Amen. Amen means so be it. All right. Excuse me, sister. I have to relax my mind. Now we will be strangers. I see that you are strictly a stranger to me. You're from away from here. You come from another city. You've got a lot of trouble on your heart. You got hard trouble to begin with. Is that right? There's a whole lot of blackness. I see a black sheep keep following you like that. Oh, it's a lie. Somebody's told a lie on you. And that was a man who was professing divine healing. He said you was a witch. Is that true? And you've got a whole stir in your church or something other about it. Isn't that right? Your pastor's sick right now. He's got polio. Is that right? Sister, don't pay no attention to what them people tell you. They're a lie. And the only thing's wrong with your heart is that nervous condition got your heart worked up. Go on home in peace, and God bless you. You're all right. God bless you. You're not all right. You believe with all your heart? Believe God will heal you that you Believe you make you well about that. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll heal the woman, and may she get completely whole. I ask this blessing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Go on your road rejoicing, saying, thank you, Lord, and you'll get well. Come, lady. Almighty God, author of life, give this woman her perfect health in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Just a minute. Something happened to you. You know that. You're aware of that. Is that right? Why, it's all over the building. And every person here could be healed right now if you'd believe it. You believe this? Have faith in God. Are you one of the ushers, sir? All right, sir. That lady sitting right there, got heart trouble, that speckled dress on. Stand up, lady, he just healed you, they had that heart trouble. You believe that with all your heart? All right, there sits a lady there with her handkerchief up crying. Just had a lick on the head the other day. She's got a headache, it's causing it, is that right? Stand up and accept your healing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. How many of the rest of you want to accept your healing? Jesus Christ is right here now to heal you. Do you believe that? All that wants to be healed, stand to your feet right now. Every person in the building that wants to be healed, stand to your feet. Raise up your hands like this to God. Almighty God, the author of life, the giver of every good gift, as our spirit is here tonight, I pray that you will heal every person in this building. Thou art here, the Holy Spirit is here. And I now, as your servant, along with these other servants, curse every disease in here. May the Jesus Christ, the Son of God, heal every person in here. Satan, leave these people in Jesus Christ's name. Now that the people have got their hands up... In Matthew 24, 3, the disciples asked Jesus three questions. When will the temple be destroyed? What shall be the sign of your coming? And what shall be the sign of the end of the age? Christ's answers to these three questions encompass the whole of the Gentile dispensation. The day of the Lord, Daniel's 70th week, and the millennium. Matthew 24 describes the seven seals and seven trumpets of the book of Revelation. Jesus answered the first question in Matthew 24, 15 to 21. The temple was destroyed by the Roman armies of Titus in AD 70. He answered the third question in Matthew 24, 32 to 34. The sign of the end of the dispensation or ages was Israel's restoration to the promised land in unbelief in 1948. These scriptural signs of the times were certified by our Lord Jesus Christ himself. These signs are crucial to determining the end time. These are signs by which we can examine our own selves, whether we are in the faith. Jesus answered the third question in Matthew 24, 22 to 30. Our English word coming is applied to two Greek words with two very different meanings. Erkamai, which means to physically come or go, as an entering or leaving a room, and perusia, which means arrival and subsequent presence, but not necessarily a physical manifestation. Clearly his disciples were not inquiring as to what would be the sign of his physical return. That will be the glorified Jesus himself. We meet him in the air, after the first resurrection and translation of the living saints. We meet him personally. His precious feet cannot touch this earth. He returns with the saints to step out upon the ashes of the wicked for the millennium, after the destruction of all life on earth. The second coming spoken of in Matthew 24 
is by no means physical. The second physical return of the glorified Lord Jesus will be an Urkamai coming. This question concerns his Perusia coming. Christ's Perusia, or his arrival and subsequent presence, is not a man, but the fullness of the word. The revelation of the seven seals brought Christ back to earth in word form. He came through the mouth of a prophet, the seventh angel or prophet messenger to the Laodicean church age. This was William Branham. Jesus explained how his perusia would be a universal coming. No man could appear universally. We are not to look for a man. The sign of today's coming was the Shekinah in the form of a cloud, as described in Daniel 7, the Gospels, Acts 1.11 and Revelation 1.7. Ezekiel called the Shekinah the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. It was seen only by the high priest once a year, when he entered the Holy of Holies on the Day of Atonement. In our day it's been photographed many times, indoors, out of doors, in different countries around the world. His photograph has been examined and certified genuine by a man who was once the FBI's chief investigator of questioned documents. It's the profile of the Lord Jesus, the only vindicated photograph of the supernatural. It's the profile of the Lord Jesus standing right behind where I was standing. And his hands are out and tongues of fire flying all from his hands. While I was speaking on the subject, say to this mountain, be moved. And don't doubt in your heart, but believe. And we've got it. It's a technic Kodachrome colors, and they got it at the home now. And they're making it. It's been examined right now by science and so forth in laboratories. And it'll be out pretty soon. Another one which makes about six of them now in different places. That's been took. This is the most outstanding of all of them. Never seen. There's his, his beard, his face, his profile, his arms hanging out. Now standing right in like this, and where he's got his arms, you can't even see a place of him. Like that, my head, and my feet down at the floor, just head and feet, that's all that was left. See? And, he, and he's standing with his arms right like this, and I've got my hands out like this, a preaching, saying, say to this mountain. And about that time, something took place, and they snapped a picture of it like that. And there it was behind, all in colors. The big, so as God does arrange, a big basket of cow lilies setting close. <laughs> he's the lily of the valley. And where do you get opium? Out of lilies. That's right. What is the opium God has? Peace. Amen. Opium, this makes you forget all about your troubles. Opium smokers, that's how they kill themselves with that opium. God has an opium. Amen. He eases every pain, heals all sickness, Amen. takes every weary away. As long as we're breathing into his opium, we're at peace. And the big basket of lilies are sitting right in front where I was speaking on the platform. In this photograph taken at Sunset Mountain, the Shekinah can be seen falling on the rock whereon Brother Branham is standing with his son, Joseph. I went westward up on that same mountain, passing up the Banks Woods there, said, throw up a rock. Say to Mr. Woods, thus saith the Lord. You'll see the glory of God. The very next day he's standing there. A whirlwind came down and blasted the mountains out. Rocks cut the top of the trees off, about three or four feet above my head. Made three big blasts. And the brothers come running over. There was about 15 men standing there, preachers and everything else. What was it? He said, what was it? I said, judgment is striking the west coast. About two days after that, the earthquake almost sunk Alaska. In this picture, the pillar of light surrounds the head of Brother Branham. The photographer pointed out that there was no light between Brother Branham and the rear of the auditorium. The following four photographs show the pillar of fire as it descends during a prayer breakfast in Lucerne, Switzerland in May 1955. This supernatural cloud was photographed over Arizona on the 28th of February 1963 and appeared in Life magazine on the 17th of May. If you turn the picture sideways, you'll notice the likeness of the head of Christ, wigged as a judge, as prophesied in Daniel 7.9, Acts 1.11, and Revelation 1.7. From approximately 150 reports, many communicated by persons well aware that this was a type of cloud unprecedented in years of sky watching, it was established that it was at least 26 miles high and 30 miles across, exhibited iridescence, 
and that its internal structure was peculiar. Although many scientific papers have been presented, including articles published in journals such as Science, Weatherwise, Books on Meteorology, Encyclopedia Yearbooks and the International Press, the phenomenon is unexplained to this day. Jesus told us, when Israel is back in the Promised Land, we should look up, for our redemption draws nigh. This was the sign of Christ's perusia. Jesus said, as lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so shall the coming or perusia of the Son of Man be. The second coming is not a man, but light on the word. Revelation. The same light which shone in Jerusalem upon an eastern people has been restored in the evening time upon our western people through the revelation of the seven seals. This was promised by many scriptures such as Zechariah 14, 6-7, Malachi 4, 5 and 6, Matthew 17, 11, 24, 22-28, Acts 3, 21-23, 1 Corinthians 13, 10, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1, together with Revelation 10, 1-7 and 18, 1-4. According to visions God had shown him, Brother Branham said that Hoffman's famous Portrait of Christ at 33 was a perfect likeness of Jesus. If you turn the photograph to the right, you'll see the clouds superimposed over a likeness of Jesus Christ, wigged as a judge, looking down upon the world. This is how Daniel and John saw Jesus, after the church ages and his mediatorial office were fulfilled, looking down upon the western world that has rejected him and put him out of the churches that are called by his name. As Jesus explained, his perusia would be a universal coming. No man could appear universally. We are not to look for a man. The sign of today's coming was the Shekinah in the form of a cloud, as described in the Old and New Testaments and prophesied from the pulpit by Brother Branham in December 1962. This sign manifested over Arizona on February the 28th, 1963. Sculptors have reproduced the likeness of several U.S. presidents at Mount Rushmore. This photograph does not do justice to the handiwork of the great master sculptor who brought this likeness of Brother Branham with his own hand in Sunset Mountain, Arizona. I've witnessed this perfect likeness of our prophet. Anyone who knew or has seen a photograph of Brother Branham would instantly recognize his profile. Many times Brother Branham spoke of his death. In April 1965, he said, I see my end coming at 56 years old. Then on December the 5th, in a message entitled, Things That Are To Be, he said, I'm beginning to get old and know that my days are numbered. I'm glad that there's something to get us out of this pest house. There's an open door and it's called death. Jesus stands at that door. Amen. He'll guide me over the river. He'll take me through that door. Every time your heart beats, you're one step closer to it. And someday, I must come to that door. You must come to that door. But when I come there, I don't want to be a coward. I don't want to scream and back off. I want to come to that door, wrap myself in the robes of his righteousness, not mine, his. By this, I know that I know him in the power of his resurrection, that when he calls, I'll come out from among the dead to be with him. Wherever this body might fall, and wherever it might land, whatever it is, I'll come out some day, because he promised it to me. On December the 18th, he was driving to Jeffersonville with his family to spend the holiday season and to deliver a series of teachings on the trail of the serpent. Satan could not allow this exposure if by any means he could prevent it. A carload of soldiers whose drunken 17-year-old driver had a history of crime and punishment from the age of 11 and had been released from a reformatory only 30 days before, crossed onto the wrong side of the road. He was killed instantly. Brother Branham died six days later, on Christmas Eve. This photograph shows the extent of damage to his 64 Ford. As God took John the Baptist home after he'd introduced the first coming of the Word, he took Brother Branham home after he'd introduced the second coming of the Word. This had to be so that the disciples of these prophets would follow the word rather than the messenger who introduced it. Brother Branham's funeral service was held in December 1965, but his body was not interred until Sister Branham had recovered. He was buried at Jeffersonville, Indiana on April the 11th, 1966.
A man approved of God was truly vindicated in our midst by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him as the churches know full well. Many books have been written, and even his critics proclaim the reality of God and the ministry of this humble man is without parallel in all the pages of the Bible. The elders of Israel said of Christ, We know you are a prophet come from God, for he has thoroughly vindicated your ministry. This has repeated in our day. We've been in the end time since Christ opened and revealed the seven seals through his prophet. Like Israel, we Gentiles will soon be without excuse and the door of grace will be shut. Yet people claim to be Christian without having received the restoration ministry of God's prophet. Peter said, it shall come to pass that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people or cast into the tribulation.